Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. You keep information about the companies and people from whom you purchase goods or services in the Vendors tab within the Vendor Center. In QuickBooks, you keep parts supply vendors, utility companies and subcontractors, and more within this list. The list of vendors tends to be one of the larger lists that you maintain. QuickBooks uses the information you enter to fill out purchase orders, bills, and checks as you make purchases for your company. You can open the Vendor Center by selecting Vendors from the menu bar and then choosing the Vendor Center command. To access the Vendors tab from within the Vendor Center, simply click the Vendors tab located at the left side of the Vendor Center. You can add vendors, edit vendor information, and inactivate or delete vendors that appear within this tab. To add a new vendor to the tab, click the New Vendor button that appears in the upper left corner of the Vendor Center above the Vendors list and then select the New Vendor command from the drop-down menu that appears. That will open the New Vendor window. Start by typing a unique name for this vendor into the Vendor Name field. If you are adding a vendor to whom you owed money as of the start date of your company file, enter the total amount outstanding into the Opening Balance field, and then select your company file's start date from the adjacent As of Calendar selector field. You only perform this task when initially adding vendors to whom you owed money as of the start date of your company file. If you are creating a vendor that you did not owe money to as of your company file start date, then you will skip the opening balance and the as of fields. Next, click the address info tab within the new vendor window. You can enter the company name of the vendor into the company name field. If the vendor is an individual, you can enter the person's information into the full name fields, which consist of title, first name, middle initial, and last name. You can enter the vendor's job title into the job title field. You can then enter the vendor contact information that you wish to record into the next eight fields that are available. There are eight data field choices that are shown by default. However, for each field, you can select what data to record by choosing the name of a data field from the drop-down field labels shown. You then record the associated vendor information within the adjacent data field to the right of each drop-down field label. The data fields shown by default are, from top to bottom and left to right, main phone, work phone, mobile, fax, main email, carbon copy email, website, and other one. Your choices of alternate fields for which you can substitute the default information are Home Phone, Alt Phone, Alt Mobile, Alt Fax, Alt Email 1, Alt Email 2, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, URL 1, URL 2, URL 3, URL 4, Skype ID, Other 2, and Other 3. Now in the Address Details section at the bottom of this tab, you can enter Build From and Shipped From information for the vendor. You can type the vendor's billing address directly into the Build From text box, or you can click the Edit button to the right of the Build From field, and then enter the billing address into the fields within the Edit Address Information window that appears. Now if you enter information into the Edit Address Information window, be sure to click the OK button when you're finished to display the address that you've entered into the Build From text box. Now if the Shipped From address is the same as the Build From address that you entered, then just click the Copy button to copy the billing information into the Shipped From text box that appears to the right. If they are not the same, you can enter the shipping address into the Ship From text box. Now to continue entering vendor information, 
click the Payment Settings tab at the left side of the new vendor window. On this tab, you enter the default purchasing information from the vendor. You can enter the account number that you have been assigned by this vendor by entering it into the account number field. This number will print in the memo field of checks that you remit to this vendor. If the vendor assigns you a credit limit, enter your credit limit amount into the credit limit field. Next, use the Payment Terms drop-down to select the default purchasing terms that you have been assigned by this vendor. You can then enter the name of the vendor as you want it to appear on checks that you issue to the vendor into the Print Name on Checks As field. Once you have entered the vendor's payment information on this tab, click the Tax Settings tab to continue. On this tab, you can enter the vendor's tax ID number for 1099 subcontractors into the Vendor Tax ID field. If the vendor is eligible for a 1099, then check the Vendor Eligible for 1099 checkbox. After entering any vendor tax information, then click the Account Settings tab to continue. On the Account Settings tab, you can enter vendor account prefill information. You can enter up to three accounts, most commonly expense or cost of goods accounts, that can appear automatically when you enter a bill that has been received from this vendor. These accounts will then appear within the Accounts field within the bill if you select this vendor record when entering a bill. This can save you some time if you always attribute the amounts from a particular vendor to a selected expense account. So, for example, if entering your telephone company as a vendor, you could select the telephone expense account from the first drop-down on this tab to have that account selected when entering a bill from this vendor in the future. Once you have entered any account information for the vendor, click the Additional Info tab to continue. On the Additional Info tab, you can use the Vendor Type drop-down to select a vendor type from the drop-down available, or you can simply type a new vendor type directly into the Vendor Type drop-down. This allows you to classify and categorize your vendors as desired for reporting purposes. Now at the right side of the Additional Info tab, you will be able to enter any custom field values for any custom fields that you've created for your vendors. We will cover creating custom fields for your QuickBooks lists in a separate lesson within this chapter. Once you've finished entering the vendor information, you can then click the OK button to save the new vendor record and close the window. To cancel the creation of a vendor record, you can instead click the Cancel button within the new vendor window to cancel changes and close it if you desire. Now in the future, you can edit an existing vendor record to add missing information or to otherwise change the vendor information. To edit a vendor record, first select the name of the vendor whose information you wish to change from the Vendors tab in the Vendor Center. You can then either double-click on the name shown in the list, or click the Edit button that appears at the right end of the Vendor Information section to the right of the Vendors list in order to open the Edit Vendor window. You can then make whatever changes are needed in the tabs displayed in this window, and then click the OK button to save your record. Like all of your QuickBooks lists, you cannot delete a list record once you have used it in a transaction. Once a record is associated with a transaction, you may only inactivate the record to hide it from view within the list. You should review Lesson 312 on inactivating and reactivating list items to learn how to perform this task in your QuickBooks lists. However, if you created a vendor record but did not use it in any transactions, then you can delete that record from the vendor list. To do this, just select the record to delete from within the list, and then choose Edit from the menu bar, and then choose the Delete Vendor command. You will then need to click the OK button in the confirmation message box that appears in order to permanently delete the selected record. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.